Let's take a look at creating a PowerPoint presentation. Let's start our presentation with a title slide. So I'm going to click where it says click to add title. Just typing in the title of our presentation today and clicking where it says to add subtitle. And we'll give our presentation a little bit of a design. Right now it's just sort of plain vanilla, plain backgrounds, nothing interesting color-wise or font-wise, but that is about to change. We're gonna head over to the Design tab and using the drop-down, pick from the gallery any of the design types. The designs that are provided here will give us color, texture, graphics, etc. So you just click the one you want to use and it applies it to the whole presentation, which is what you want. One look and feel to sort of bring your presentation together. You do have the ability to choose from a variant after you have selected a design. The variants are along the top and as you can see I hover and it will let me try it out, see which one I might want to go with. Okay. Okay, we'll go back to the home tab and we'll add a new slide. So the top part of the new slide icon is where we're gonna click. It gives us a new slide. This is sort of a multi-purpose slide, very functional. Gives you the ability to add a title, text, or any of the components that you see here embedded within that placeholder. So we'll take a look at each of those as we go through our session today. I'm gonna to start by adding the title. And this is a text slide, so I'll start with click to add text where there is a bullet already. Just giving that a click and putting in our first item. Which is bullet and I'll press the enter key and it will give me another bullet. What I'm going to do is just press the tab key on the keyboard. Another way to do this would be the increase list level up on the home tab of the ribbon sort of indents that a little bit and you'll see a little bit more as I start typing. Pressing the enter key, it will also give me a sub-level bullet at this point, which is what I want. Pressing the enter key again for my last bullet, this time I want it to be a main level bullet. So I can either use the shift tab keyboard combination or up on the home tab of the ribbon, I can use the decreased list level, which I'm pointing to right now. And now onto the next slide. So the top part of the new slide icon on the home tab of the ribbon. And we'll add our title. And in this case, we'll be using a table to organize our schedule. So I can quickly create a table using the first of the embedded icons. Just giving that a click. It suggests a five by two, five columns, two rows. You can replace the numbers that are there. You can use the spin controls to change that. And you can always change the number of columns and rows once the table is produced. So I'm gonna go with this five by two table, clicking on okay. It will create the table for me. And what you'll do to move around the cells of the table, you can either click or use the tab key. So I'm gonna leave that first cell blank. I'm gonna press the tab key and go ahead and start to enter the days uh, for my schedule. Using the tab key, like I said, to move around. We do have that extra column. We'll get rid of that in just a moment. Uh, let's come around to the next row. In um, the next row, I'll start with my the times for my schedule. Okay. Well, I have a few more times to list, but I've run out of rows, so I'm going to take myself um, over to the Layout tab. So on the top right of the ribbon, you've got a Layout tab underneath the Table Tools umbrella, and that's where you can change the number of columns and rows in your table. So um, I can either insert rows above or insert below, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the insert below. So there's for my next class, and I need one more. So there we have it. And to get rid of this extra column over there on the right, I can click inside and use the delete option. From the delete menu, I can choose to delete columns or rows, or even the whole table if I need to. 
I'm going to choose delete columns and go on with entering my information once again. So I'll just keep working down that first column for a moment to list out my times. Now that the table is complete, we can do a few things to enhance it. Just make sure the table is selected. Uh, and what you can do perhaps is change the design, the design, the colors, etc. You can do that underneath your table tools umbrella. The design tab will give you an opportunity to select from some preset designs. You can pick the one that fits your purposes, fits your presentation the best. And then other things you might want to do to enhance your table, of course, change the size, change the position, change the text, and all of that can be done um, quickly and easily. For example, to resize the entire table, I can use one of the corner pieces. Just stretch that out from the center. Okay. And if I want to change the font sizes, I can certainly do that. The whole table is selected. So if I just move over to the home tab, there is the increase font size icon on the ribbon here. I can keep clicking that till it looks uh, about right size wise. And then if there's a need to resize a single column or a single row, you can certainly do that. Just bring your mouse pointer over the wall for that column or that row and click and drag in either direction. Okay. Just quickly, a few other things that you can do if you have done a little bit of uneven resizing, you're going to be able to, on the layout tab, do something called distribute the columns in this case. So if you've, if they're unequal um, due to a little bit of individualized resizing, you can go ahead and use, for example, distribute columns, which will put them all back to an equal size. If you want to change the orientation inside of them, right now the text is all left aligned. You can certainly select the whole table or just the cells you want to affect, which I've done at, in, in this case, and use on the layout tab here underneath your table tools. You can go ahead and use the center, right? Uh, or any of the alignment options for that matter. So there we go. Schedule looks good. For our next slide, we want to be able to use one of the charts um, to, to sort of plot our progress. And we're going to go over to the home tab of the ribbon. We're going to hit the top part of the new slide icon. And we'll give our char chart a title. And we'll use um, the second of the embedded icons there, which is called insert chart. We are just going to be able to pick the kind of chart that we want, and we can always change our mind later. And any of the variants along the top as well. And then click the OK button. Just giving it a moment to bring up the chart sheet. And in the chart sheet is where I'm going to be able to enter my information. So um, you just go ahead and click in the cell and type what it is that you want. This is all dummy data, so we will be replacing this. Okay, so the, the data has been entered. The dummy data um, actually, there's a little bit left of the dummy data. If that's the case, you really want to delete that whole row or that whole column. Otherwise, it might skew your chart a little bit. So um, the best way to do that, for example, row five is left over from the, um, the sample data. I'm going to go ahead and click on that button there to select the whole row. I'm going to press the delete key on my keyboard. Another way to do that, of course, would be to right click and choose delete. Okay. And what you want to make sure is that there are no extra columns or extra rows um, within the outline. The outline is what's going to be plotted in your chart. So we want to make sure and if you need to just click and drag to adjust it. Uh, and once the data is all entered, you don't have any blank columns or rows incorporated into your range there, you can just go ahead and close this little chart um, window. You can go ahead and change the design of this chart just like we did with the table. Um, now on the right side of the ribbon, you've got a chart tools umbrella with the two tabs. Those are the contextual tabs that will help you with that chart. 
If you don't see that on the ribbon, it just means that your chart is not selected. So I've clicked off the chart. I've lost those tools. All I need to do is go ahead and click on the chart to get those tools back. So just simply gonna do a design. I can use the drop down and pick from one of the designs that are here. Definitely wanna choose something that maybe has a little bit of a darker background. Um, give that a click there. And just like the table, we can resize it. You can use a corner piece to resize it, make that a little bit bigger. You can also pick the chart up and move it using your mouse. You can also use the um, uh, the keyboard, uh, of course, the arrow keys on the keyboard to shift that around a little bit. And when it's the right size and you're all set, there you go. If you do need to get back to edit the data, just make sure that the chart is selected and you can use the edit data button um, that is on the design tab of those chart tools. That will get you back to where we were when we were initially entering the information. And like we said, you can go ahead and enter, correct, just um, replace the information. And then once you close it, the chart, of course, will update uh, to reflect that new information. And let's go on to the next slide using the top part of the new slide icon. I'm going to add the title here. And we're going to do something a little bit different with this slide. Rather than another bulleted text slide, we're going to use a nice alternative. It's going to be SmartArt. So we can use the third icon here. Um, on the embedded toolbar to insert a smart art graphic. There's all different kinds of smart art options. You can scroll through the list or browse one of the categories over there on the left. And just select the one that you want to use. I'm going to go with this staggered process. As you click it, it'll show you an example and explain what it is or what it does. And just click on OK. Then it's just a matter of clicking into the individual boxes there uh, to type in the, the titles or the, the words. So a little bit of a more interesting way than yet another bulleted slide. So um, just like all of the other elements we saw, we can take that whole smart art, we can resize it. There's a resize. Um, control in the bottom right. We can change, for example, the color scheme. There's a color change color button up there on the Smart Tools design tab. So you can go with whichever you prefer. You can add textures or what they call as styles. Okay. Um, just moving back to the left side of this ribbon, you can also change the flow right now. Um, we've got arrows over there on the right side. I can go ahead and click, for example, right to left. That will switch things around so it's, it's staggered with the arrows on the left side. Just flip that back. Um, if you need more than the three um, sort of shapes that we have, you can sort of select one and use the Add Shape button. And it will give you another shape in most cases. And if you want to get rid of it, just select it and use the Delete key on your keyboard. Uh, to remove any that are no longer needed. Okay, and let's add another slide. The title of us, this slide is Avoid Injury, and we're going to use a little bit of a funny video that we have. So the last icon on the embedded group there. I'm going to browse out to where that might be stored and just select it. You're going to be able to play the video um, manually through the little play controls. Uh, and another thing that you can do if you use the video tools playback tab, you're actually going to be able to do things like trim the video. If there's excess in the beginning or the end, or you just want a little bit of the video, then you can certainly do that. Just use the trim video and use the crop handles to indicate where you want the video to begin and where you want the video to end and anything outside these crop handles will be deleted. So I'm gonna go ahead and crop out, just focusing on a, a small bit of this video. Click on OK, and my video is there and it's cropped. Uh, some of the things that you may wanna do, um, you can have the video start automatically. So as soon as you get to this slide, it will play that video. And um, 
Also a good recommendation is to get that video to play, not in this small little window, but playing it full screen. So whatever size monitor your audience may be viewing this on, they'll see it uh, as big as possible. Our last slide today, um, for a little bit something different, we're going to be using the bottom part of the new slide icon so we can pick from a dozen or so different slide layouts. Uh, just different ways of arranging your content on the slide. I'm going to go with two content, give it a title, and we can add, for example, text on one side and pictures or tables or charts on another. Um, or just two different pictures, whatever it is that you want to, to put onto your slide. So we're going to use a little bit of text. Okay, and over on the right side, what we're going to be using is bringing in a picture. We haven't done this yet. It'll give us a chance to do that. So the first um, little icon here uh, in the second row of the embedded buttons there, I can go ahead and look for that pool picture that I want to bring in, just uh, double-clicking to select it. And I can, of course, resize it using a corner piece click and drag it to perhaps another location on the slide, maybe making it a little bit bigger. Uh, going back to the text that's here, I can also manipulate that a little bit. I have that whole placeholder selected. And just like we did way in the beginning with our table, I can increase the font size for everything there, making it look a little bit more balanced, for example. And there we have it. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon.